Some postman is grooving to this podcast, which is called Trapped Under Plastic. The podcast for people too busy procrastinating to paint their hoard of gray. Very true. Yeah. Special announcement. I'm going to poop on it. <laughs> I have a Kickstarter campaign that is launched. And by the time that you are listening to this episode, it'll be live. You should go check it out. John worked on it. Yeah. It has a lot of cool things. It has uh, 75 millimeter resin wood elf miniatures. Miniatures. Uh, it has master classes, video master classes on how to paint those miniatures by master classes <laughs> by the people who painted the box art while they're painting the box art. So it's not like someone painted the box art and then we like replicated the paint job. Mm -hmm. It's like the actual box art. Uh, there are these metal brush boxes, brush boxes that are sexy. Look uh, at that. Double layer. Look at all those. Two foam. Got a thing for other tools oh, in there. Oh, look at that. You got a little tchotchke area. A tchotchke area. I actually saw your video on it, and I saw you had V1 of the foam, and I was oh, yeah, like, I, I got to get that boy some better foam, because that shit does not work. Uh, I, I had to do a little movie magic. You did, yeah. <laughs> um, this foam actually works. Hey! <laughs> um, we got this little special thing. We got plinths. There are more uh, surprises. I don't know what uh, stretch goals are going to be unlocked by the time the podcast comes <gasps> out. There's going to be stretch goals? Yes! Uh, extra goodies, free goodies, add-ons. What stretch goal is you fart in a jar and you mail it to him? That's the one million. Every backer gets a farted in jar. Oh, sweet. Dude, if you need some extra farts okay. to, to fill them all up, yeah. I'm your man. Okay. I, yeah. We'll eat a bunch of beans. Dude, we're just going to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> Listen. Hey, I'm doing an ad read right now. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go <laughs> You're ahead. fucking doing some goddamn story. Um, <laughs> shit, what was I going to say? It's a Kickstarter live now. Go check it out. Links in the video description. There's a tier that I just added. <gasps> I don't know if I'm going to keep it, so it might be gone if you go and look. It's called the 100% ball sack tier. All the sacks? Okay, so you get everything in the campaign, like the last tier, but also you get one of the wood elves... Uh, at random, painted by me to 100% ball sack. And I'm going to make a video series on my channel of the three called the 100% ball sack series. And I'm going to make the video as fucking epic as the paint job. Think the the Renegade Knight Titan oh. conversion. So in the neighborhood of 50 minutes long-ish, like super fucking overproduced and kind of intentionally over the top, and also an over-the-top paint job. So that if you do this, there's only going to be three people that can have this. Three people that get it. It's not a super valuable thing to have because obviously like any number of people can buy a box, but only three can buy it. And I'm kind of like getting back into commission painting in a way, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of doing it in a fun way that I think kind of uses a term that we're all familiar with. That's part of like the the ethos of Miniac mm -hmm. and, and Top and stuff like that. And I thought it was funny. Yeah. Oh, also, you'll own one thing that will you'll never be able to get. Exactly. And you'll be able to look on the internet and say, that's it. That's yeah, and there'll be, a, there'll be a, a sick video for it, too. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty awesome. I and, and do they also get the fart in a jar? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're interested in any of that stuff, it's linked down in the description below. Go check it out. I, I feel like we fall into one of three categories of Who's listeners. Who's we? Who's we? Okay. Uh, the the colloquial... Goody pee pee <laughs> nation. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really apply here. Someone Whatever. needs to write a John dictionary. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And cartoonery needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> cartoonery. You know the cartoonery board? <laughs> yeah, dude. Is there that little hams? And... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Three three camps. Three three camps. Okay. There's the, the goody pee pees that are listening to us while they're hobbying. Okay. You know, that's that's kind of one of the reasons we, we built this thing is we built this city. Yeah. On, on, on sprues and glue. Do. Sprues and do? Sprues and do. the city on sprues and do. Yeah. Okay. That's good. We need to make that whole song. Yeah. Put that on a shirt. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. That's a next next top shirt idea. <laughs> if you're an artist and you heard that, don't make that shirt. <laughs> That's how we actually get cool merch is we say, don't do it. And people are like, ha, hold my beer. <laughs> you guys got to rein in your talent for when John says random shit on things that are actually useful, <laughs> which is rare. <laughs> so there's the, you know, there's group one, which is uh, listening in while you're hobbying. Yep. There's group two that's listening while they wish they were hobbying, okay. a.k.a. People at work. At work, commute, 
you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, probably maybe exercising too. Yeah, we got one or two. Yeah, maybe pooping. Pee-pees. Yeah, man, that's gotta be a long poop. Yeah, um, it's like, man, I wish I could be hobbing right now, but I gotta poop for an hour and a half. <laughs> and there's group, and, and you can fluctuate between all these groups, just like you can fluctuate your poops. Okay, uh, group three is <laughs> strangely uh, relevant to yes. the preamble. Ramble. Yeah, this will come in in just a moment and f- be flushed out. Uh, <laughs> and group three is you're listening to us. And you should be hobbying, mm. you know, like you're doing, like you're you're chilling, scroll. You you got it playing on your Spotify, and you're scrolling through Facebook or mm-hmm. the Instagrams, or you're just, you know, doing things that that you're not actually doing things. Yeah, yeah. that our cell phones most likely are the culprit of yeah. our like brain absorption, non work work. So I I those of you that listen to us because you wish you were hobbying, awesome. That's ideal. Those of you that listen to it, listen to us while you are hobbying, equally awesome. Yes. If you find yourself listening to us when you could be hobbying, maybe see how you can work your way into group one there. You know, a little bit. Say, like, oh, new trapped under plastic. I'm going to sit down and, and build some dudes. Yes. You know, I think this is how we help the hobby. There really. you go. Yeah. And if you feel guilty about not doing anything, you should. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people that have podcasts will not tell you the cold hard truth, right? (laughs) They're just like, look, you're listening. That's all I care about. No, we do care about (laughs) you. We want you to be better people. We want you to be less engaged in in the listening and and engaged in a different activity. Yeah. Like you can build little dudes and listen pretty well. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to do like your golden demon piece while you're listening to us, you're just going to mess up because you're going to be laughing so much. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, time yeah. to get do a very long preamble ramble. I believe. Yeah, you I, have two bullet points. I, got I have a couple two bullet things, points, and we're gonna we're gonna alternate this back and forth. All right. Uh, I I got I got one that just uh, hit my radar this morning. I wanted to bring up because here's what happens: when people email me. It's fair game, okay, to talk about it on the podcast. Okay. A young man by the name of Walker. Walker's a hot, uh, Walker Owens. Yes. Okay. Okay. You know. You know of Walker. Got a, Owens? Got a similar email. Oh. Okay. Walker. I see you're not your uh, first choice to the prom. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he's trying to take us both to the prom. He, he's keeping his options open. Yeah, I get that. I get that. So Walker from Ohio is a high school student, and uh, he's taking a college level uh, English composition course. So good on you. Walker, you nerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he reached out uh, to do an interview uh, for a paper he has to write for class. And it, 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 I kind of glazed it at first and was like, about inspiration. I'm like, yeah, I'm your inspiration. Okay, I'll, you, can do this interview. <laughs> <laughs> you can do this interview, Walker. And then I go on to read on. It's not about me inspiring him. It's about you being inspired. Yeah. So I don't know if he wants me to say uh, uh, he inspires me. Yeah. But maybe I'll say that and just fuck up his paper. Yes. <laughs> I think the problem I have with it is it, it seems like a fairly hopeful and uplifting topic. Mm-hmm. And if I get in there, I'm going to be all fucking sad and dour and shit. <laughs> just, like, I'm never inspired. Fuck mini painting. Uh, it's just and, a savage. Yeah. And then I'd be like, oh, okay. This is not what the teacher asked us to do. <laughs> yeah. So. That, that, I, I can that, yang your yang thoughts. on that. though. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's, yeah. Okay. You be the yang. I'll be the yang. I believe it's yin and yang. Yeah. Well. Yin Yang twins, okay? They, there's, okay, there's not two Gs. Whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, you be the yin. Okay. And I'll be the yin. Is that the good one or the bad one? I, I think. Which one's the good one? I'll be the good one. You're the white one. Okay. I'm the black one. <laughs> okay, okay. With the white dot. Yeah. That's a badass one. Okay. Like, there's people, nobody's scared of the little white teardrop. Are people like, scared uh-oh. of either of them? You're like, uh oh, there's also a black teardrop. That's I better it. watch myself. Yeah. That's so, my reaction. Yeah. So, uh, Walker, I'm coming for you. You're going to get an A, or I'm going to drive to Ohio and tell your teacher what for. <laughs> All right. Next item. I uh, I played nemes- Nemesis with the boys. I, I saw you're on the fancy new table. Yes. You you got you brought them out to the Stu Stu studio? Yes. All right. Okay. That was an, a reference to a thing you referenced before, mm-hmm. but I still don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. I knew at one point, but then I forgot. Nope. That's okay. Then it's gonna, you're going to lose it again. I just feel the need to say it out loud. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know? caught that it was a reference. Yeah. Just, just, to, just to keep everyone up to date on my current reference understanding levels. Yeah. It was still early. Still all time loves. That was probably early Trapped Under Plastic. That was like one of our first like references that, that people were like, oh, Oh, that was a reference. That began. Reference, and it is a fairly obscure song reference. So, uh, maybe not. 
<laughs> anyway, okay, so they're playing Nemesis. That yes. looked like it took up every square inch that table had to offer, that Dude. game. Yeah, well, okay, a lot of stuff in some of my Instagram stories didn't need to be out. Like, for instance, there are uh, eight or ten characters. He only plays four, and I had, like, all the characters' cards out for every single one because I was, like, organizing them. Um, so you were, like, cultivating an Instagram story? You fucking influencer. Cultivating? Yeah, you were like setting things up so it wasn't oh, real yeah. life. Oh, yeah, it was staging. To make it look like it was like... Staged. Oh, sure, staged. What was happening was I... Uh, Curtis asked me to sleeve cards, so I was sleeving cards and keeping them in piles. Wow, Curtis. <laughs> He's, Curtis is a sleever? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm also a, a dirty sleever. little sleever. <laughs> yeah, I'm also a sleever, but only for only for Kingdom Death. I don't sleeve anything else. Yeah. But, well, the game came with sleeves, so... Oh, it know. did? Yeah, because he bought like... The big Kickstarter one. Oh, but like yeah. aftermarket. Uh, oh, he bought it from a dude that was offloading it all. Yeah, nice. So he got a mega discount. So it's pretty cool. Oh, no, look at Curtis. Yeah, yeah, throwing around his big bucks on yes. some big mini games. <laughs> so you played Nemesis. It looks like physically, like just like walking by and seeing all. First of all, a little bit overwhelming, all the shit, but. It looks very cool. Yeah. Like the design aesthetic and the, the coloration of everything is everything's like, oh, there's dark, but then there's some blues and there's like bright ass orange. Like it looks like, oh, this looks freaking cool. All right. Yeah. Let me, let me talk about it. Okay. Okay. Fine. <laughs> fine, 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 fine. Shut the fuck up, John. Wait, okay, tell me about your Nemesis game. First of all, big mistake. I have no snacks in my office. Mm. We ordered canes, but we had no snacks. So that was an issue. Brought the dogs with. Yeah. Because uh, wife was going to mass and getting tattoos, so they were there hanging out. I brought them some peanut butter jars to lick on, like oh, you know, like the, yeah. the empty ones. Yeah, yeah, they love that shit. Yeah, they don't cut their tongues on the little on the little edge. Yeah, it's you, you got to take them. You got to take them away after a little bit. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a stretch. <laughs> okay, the gameplay itself. Um, if there was a graph that charted complexity and, and enjoyment, I feel like it would certainly be all the way on the complex side, mm -hmm. and it's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. But some of the mechanics in the game seem a little needlessly complicated okay um because yeah there's tokens there's cards there's, there's minis there's uh, a board there's tiles for rooms um there's a lot going on in the game as you saw in the yeah. instagram story um but yeah but impression. does that complexity add to like the either customization of how you play or the depth or of what different kinds of gear you can get and complexity and it being really cool combats does it feel like there's some good stuff to there. I would say 85% of the time it does. Cool. There are some things that just seem like this is unnecessary and could have been like folded into another mechanic you already had or another token or another deck of cards you already had and made simpler. Oh, uh, okay. But yeah, I played as the CEO. He's decrepit. He's evil. <laughs> he owns the spaceship that everyone is trying to get off of. I felt like it was very, very me. Is this a, uh, like, a, it's not cooperative then? It's a, you're, you're like against each other? No. You're kind of like, everyone gets a deck of two cards. Sorry. Everyone gets two cards that represent two goals you have to pick. One is a corporate goal. One is a personal goal. Mm. Uh, in my case, the personal goal seemed a little more altruistic than my corporate goal, which was either kill player two. No, no. You can't kill anyone. Ensure player two dies or be the only one left alive on the ship. Oh, shit. So this is this is kind of like a Among Us thing where it's like, yeah, you, you got your own motives of what you need to do. Exactly. To win, exactly. But you're not actively trying to kill each other. Yeah. Most of the time. Right. And then when the first alien attack happens, you have to pick one of the two. Do you like, do I, do I want to do a personal Bing. goal or and the personal one was explore all the ship and do something else. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of a fun thing. I picked, obviously, killing my friend. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. But yeah, you can't kill anyone. So you have to kind of just set up their death. Like, uh, the, the story is that humans have a thing implanted in their brain, which makes them uh, incapable of harming other humans. Oh. Um, and so they have to do things like, okay, if an alien is in a room with a human, I can throw a grenade into that room. Or I can close a door on someone who is... Ah. you know shit like that uh so yeah but like okay let's say it was pretty you you couldn't kill him but it was pretty obvious that you killed them and you're just like boop closed door <laughs> yeah. you hear Arr! the other guys are like i can't really do anything i can't hurt you right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah kind of you're like oh yeah, i guess he's gone yeah it's like passive violence yeah yeah so then you're always like paranoid if you're in a dangerous situation yeah oh that's kind of fun yeah so my plan was to Dis so if two out of three of the engines are inoperable, everyone dies unless you get on an escape pod. Mm. So my goal was to make the engines inoperable close to when it was supposed to launch 
get on an escape pod and get out of there. And so the sad part is the moment I destroyed one of the engines, everyone was against me. Oh, They're no. like, okay, you're the fucking bad guy. And it's like, I, I guess I am, but like, I'm just trying to do what's right for me. Right. Which is a very CEO answer. <laughs> just, listen, as long as I survive, the shareholders will be happy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so are, is, are there in groups between bad guys and good guys? Was everybody else like a stand up, like soldier, like just trying to keep everyone alive and you were the only asshole in the group or what <laughs> it turned out that i kind of was the only asshole but it, oh. it depends on those cards oh there was a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist i can't remember which one it was um there was a mechanic mm. who was the only one that had any real skills <laughs> <laughs> and then there was an android uh okay. those are the four characters we picked okay and they all had kind of you know the android wants to like uh, like get rid of all humans and to take over the universe to, yeah uh, yeah her her goal was to send the ship to mars and ensure no escape pods get to earth so it's just like total isolation it feels very android ish that feels, that feels slightly i would say evil because in in its eyes yeah it was not being it's doing the right thing yeah right but yeah. to everybody else that yeah, feels pretty bad news bears but I, he wasn't doing anything that was directly obvious like i was that could be considered evil. Okay. Like did he destroying parts of the show? Did he role play as the android and use an android voice? No, no, he did it. That was Curtis. He should have. Curtis, come on. <laughs> Prime opportunity. Alert. <laughs> I just want to love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's Nemesis. That is that is Nemesis. So would you play it again? Yeah. Okay. Is there like a campaign mode? There isn't. They're one-off games. It kind of makes sense that there wouldn't be because the way the game sounds like it's designed is in a way where... And sometimes the games can be much more tight and from a rules perspective and be much more engaging. Instead yes. of like, oh, everybody wants a campaign system these days. So I know, slap, yeah. Slap one on. It's kind of annoying, honestly. Every game you buy is like, it feels like you get the most out of it when you play it over multiple sessions. Right. But like, I don't want to commit to that all the time. Yeah, sometimes I just want tonight yeah. to be... Great. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a like a teenage love story. It kind of does. I was yeah. like, are you quoting like some teen bop movie know. right it's now? It's probably out there somewhere. Tonight! It's like they're at prom, and both of their dates have left them for the evening. Yeah. And they're sitting outside on the curb. Two dudes. Yeah, two dudes. Okay. And they're just like, oh, man, this sucks. My life is over. <laughs> <laughs> this is like senior year. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's this, no, almost summer. Yeah, it's like, we never got to make it. <laughs> Because that's the phrasing that they use. And then... Hold on, hold on. What does make it mean? You don't know what make it means? <laughs> make sweet love? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you need to watch more 80s teen romance movies because that's they use like awkward phrasing that you means... See that? Yes. Yeah. Did you make it? <laughs> did, you, did you get to the promised land? Did you make it there? <laughs> that's what I'm thinking of right now. <laughs> It kind of is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. For a high schooler, probably. Right. Yeah. yeah. So so they're sitting on this curb, right? And and they're just down on their luck. And then, like, a cool guy, that is, they don't know where he came from, like, pulls up in, like, a Corvette. And he has his arm out the window. And he's like, hey, boys, you ready to check out this city? And they're like, they look to each other. And, like, happy music starts playing. They're like, yeah, let's do it. Tonight's the night. <laughs> they get in his muscle car. He's a college student. Yeah, right? Yeah. He's got beers in the back. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah this yeah, is yeah. the start of it. But what they don't realize is this is actually the start of a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he tries to do an alley, skins them alive. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then he goes back to the prom as them. <laughs> <laughs> like both of them. <laughs> It's like both of their skins, but like fused together. Yeah, it's Two Face, He's right? Got a skin it's suit happened. on. So it's Two Face, but it's a skin suit. Yeah, yeah, Two Face. Yeah, yeah. skin suit, Two Face, right? So depending on which angle he looks, and then like he finds the girls that that they, they dropped him. Yeah, and then they're with the jock guys, oh. right? Okay, and so the guys got dumped. Okay, yeah, they got dumped. So they they, they got brought to prom with dates and got dumped at prom. Yeah, this why? is this is why they're at the most vulnerable point right. for the serial killer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Michael Bay. <laughs> if you're listening, I love this. <laughs> you could bring us on, and we could make this the most badass, crazy killer clowns from outer space level. Of horror movie, and you can put as many explosions in as you like. Mm. Okay, mm. so 
That's it. That's, okay. that's our that's our pitch. No, if he's there, I'm sure he's there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you you played you played Nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. My next one. Okay. So I was on a, a couple of podcasts recently, and uh, they're going to be going live here probably about the time that this episode goes live. Um, the first one, uh, the second one was a was me talking about the first one, so it's a little bit convoluted. Uh, I was on the podcast known as the Twenty Sided Realms. Mm. Twenty Sided Realms is a D and D podcast where they play D and D, so they don't talk about D and D. It's a D and D campaign over one hour episodes via podcast, and it is run by the Muppet Hitman Travis, who is the DM. Um, these are all Blake's. Uh, names of people big nasty blake yeah so big nasty b and uh, robo ed are also players in the in the campaign and they're um from life after the cover save famously known for life after the cover save you might also know them from a variety of other podcasts that they have started and quit over the years <laughs> such as fart fartstone uh a podcast about hearthstone uh big nasty b was a was a guest on this this trapped under plastic show yeah and uh, at some point I think maybe this summer they talked about they want to do a road trip up to or not road trip. They take a plane because they live in California to the Midwest again. And I'm like, you know, you guys want to be on again. That means we don't have to come up with a topic. So yes, it's great. We love that. Yeah. We so, love low effort. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. So also is Raquel from Rock X Art, the YouTube channel. She is an awesome art and miniatures focused YouTube channel. Also is a guy by the name of Brent. Uh, he uh, has a small YouTube channel known as Goober Town Hobbies. Yep. And uh, that's up and comer. That's, he's a real up and comer. <laughs> and uh, these guys and gal uh, play D&D. And I reached out to, to Big Nasty B and was like, hey, you know, you ever want like a like a guest appearance? You know, you know, like sometimes on TV shows, they bring in a guest person for like four episodes and you, you kind of get to like them and they kill them at the end kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, I want to do that. So I got up with the with the DM. We we we, co- we got into cahoots. Yes. And we came up with some really gnarly stuff for them to do. Mostly me and he's like, "Are you sane?" And I'm like, "No, but we're <laughs> going to do this anyway." And so I was on I did two Sundays worth of recording. It's going to either be two or three total episodes of the podcast. And it was a lot of fun. Nice. It's a lot of fun. Um it's cool kind of going in like feeling you're slightly behind the dm screen like i knew a bunch of stuff the party didn't know mm, but yeah. i'm there but i'm a good guy but am i a good guy am i a friend and am i an enemy who knows you'll have to listen to the 20 sided realms podcast to find out and they're not too far into their campaign i think they only have like six or so episodes out and they're an hour long each and so you could get caught up yeah it's and pretty then, short yeah it's but it's a lot of fun they do a really good uh travis does a good job editing too like he brings it down to a nice condensed hour. It's fairly professional. I'm like, oh, okay. so the actual experience is longer than an hour. Yeah, because we I was were, like, when I play D and D, it fucking takes hours. Yeah, we were probably it was over the course of roughly somewhere between two and three hours per session that we played, and he's saying we we'll go down to two or three episodes, so we're probably cutting it in half. Dude, that probably fucking blows. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and he adds in like sound effects and music and all kinds of stuff like he's he's, Bravo. Put, he's putting in the putting in the work but yeah. it's really well produced so nice um so i did that and then i was on just the other day i recorded an episode of life after the cover safe with big nasty b and ed and i like to go on that podcast every now and again because <laughs> it reminds me that you know what we're not that disorganized <laughs> <laughs> Wow, do you B&B and RoboEd put on blast? <laughs> yeah, I, okay. I mean it in the best possible way when I say that. This is just is purely a compliment, guys, because they're like, hey, you want to be on? I'm like, sure. And they're like, uh, all right, this is the link. This is the day and time. Okay, go on. I'm like, hey, guys. I'm like, hey, uh, all right, we're recording now. Boop. We, I had no idea what we were talking about. They had no idea what we were talking about. Nice. They're just like, there was no topics. There let was no structure. It was just let her rip. And we talked about... Everything and anything over the course of an hour or two. And it was just, it was a lot of fun. We talked about Adepticon. We talked about painting. We talked about travel. We talked about uh, 40K. We talked about Henry Cavill. We talked about everything. So it was, it was, uh, it was a blast. So, you know, the Henry Cavill thing. Yeah, we're going to get to that newsy news. Okay. Did you, are you, you going to talk about someone, the, the post someone made in our Facebook group? 
Oh yeah, there was a big post about that. I'll, I'll, I'll add on to it. Okay, I read the comments and and know what the post about. Okay. Okay. Last item, I'm gonna talk about my colonoscopy. <laughs> if you don't want to hear about that, there's a timestamp below. There is a timestamp uh, in the timeline of the video. Amber will put a chapter to the what we painted section. Just skip this part. I'm gonna try to be as professional as I can, <laughs> to talk but about knowing us too, it's gonna get weird. <laughs> okay, so I had various health signs that signaled that I should be concerned about with, your poop shoot with my rectum. <laughs> <laughs> rectum. Damn near killed him. <laughs> if you had a colonoscopy, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, so I scheduled, uh, I went to the doctor. He was like, you should get a sigmoidoscopy. Oh boy. Sigmoid a, Freud. A sigmoidoscopy <laughs> is like colonoscopy light. <laughs> oh, okay. so instead of going all the way up the intestines, okay. they just peek in like two inches. <laughs> what? That's it. Looking for, uh, what are those things called? Polyps? Not those. Some of them. It's not a hernia. What is the thing I'm trying to think of right now? Uh, face huggers. It's the other thing that you're concerned about when you get a colonoscopy. Worms. Polyps and the things that tumors. Nah, that's that's what, that's what a polyp is. A polyp could be a tumor. Yeah. Yes. It's not a tumor. Okay. Anyways, look for small things. <laughs> Just in and around that area. So I go. So there's a prep for this procedure. Okay. This okay? is this is the scary part. Yeah. Um, but there are two different preps for sigmoid and colonoscopy. So I did the prep for a sigmoid, which is giving yourself two enemas. Okay. Okay. So I had to do that. But that was it. Okay. Just clean it out a little bit. Okay. And I show up. I put on the garb. And then the doctor comes in and he was like, I read your file. We should just do a full-on colonoscopy just to make sure, just to see everything. Because it's like, if we look in there, two inches, and we don't see anything, we're going to ask, is there more stuff up there that we're concerned about? We're already in here. It's yeah. like your car's in the garage. Yeah. You might as well get it all checked over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I, he's, like, if, he's like, if you're my brother, this is what I would tell you. And I was like, I appreciate that. That sounds like something a fucking doctor would say to get you to do what he wants you to do. <laughs> oh, shit. I <laughs> fell for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I got dressed. I left. Came back, I don't know, a later time. You're like, hey, 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 listen here. Hey, 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 hey. I had to put stuff on my butt two times for this. <laughs> two times. And you're telling me to just go home? <laughs> <laughs> you could have looked at the chart prior to today, sir. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, do not worry. I said this in a review because uh, they sent an email. The experience was pretty subpar. Uh, some parts were great. Other parts were terrible. Uh, okay. So colonoscopy prep for those who are not aware you have to get everything out of your intestines yeah so at a certain point you gotta stop eating solids at a certain point you gotta stop eating food with a lot of fiber in it because you want it to get loose you want it to all run out Ooh, you know yeah. it seems to be a slip and slide in there exactly right? okay and then at another point probably like 36 hours before the procedure you have to start drinking a combination of gatorade and Miralax, which is a laxative Woo! before then i had to take two laxatives so you're, you're just pooping it a lot mm. now i don't know what happened to me but those laxatives fucked me up. Like, I, did you like woozy and shit? I vomited three times. I don't think that's part of the procedure. So I called after the second time and I was like, what is going on? And she's like, unfortunately, this is normal. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding? Design a better process. <laughs> right. um, and she was like, just drink the thing more slowly. I was supposed to drink 64 ounces of Gatorade over two hours uh, so like every 15 minutes I was drinking like a certain amount eight ounces plus like a certain amount of Miralax mm -hmm. um, is and that like chalky and like like Pepto flavored or like, you can know, you get different flavors I don't know because Amber went and bought it for me graciously oh, um, you, you don't like get it through the hospital like you can just like, go to Walmart yeah. and get it I went, we went to, I think we went to Target dude we should do a no. Miralax mini painting I am not doing that ever again <laughs> uh, and so it didn't taste like much of anything other than Gatorade, which I was thankful for because I nice. thought it was going to taste nasty. That was like Pedialyte. It's like, yeah. Exactly. It's okay. exactly like that. Okay. Um, and she told me, just drink it more slowly. The, the side effect is that you're going to be up later in the night, probably going to the bathroom. And that was true. I was up until three in the morning pooping no. um, how is there more in there do you get to where it's like dry heaving you know when you're like dry heaving, <laughs> like when you got a barf but there's nothing left in you does your butt work the same way you know it's just water after a certain point oh yeah and, oh the butt pees but yeah. so the question is is why am i not peeing why am i pooping this out and so maybe the laxatives send a signal to the lower intestine that's like this is food but it's not yeah. food, you know? I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't urinating. You were, it just was through your butt. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, 
I had a terrible experience with laxatives. I was vomiting up late at night. Um, and then I go there on the day. Um, and that this part, the procedure part, was totally fine. They went in, put an IV in me, checked my BP, you know, all that good stuff that doctors do. <laughs> check the, the BP. Your BP. <laughs> They have a machine that does that. Yeah, does BP like, checker. Yeah, 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. Uh, went into the room. It was very dim. I got, oh, ca- yeah. I got carted in there. Oh, man. Like I a felt corpse? Like, kind of, yeah. Okay. And then put me on my side. You Did know. you feel like kind of like a mummy, like all your moisture was gone and you were just like... <laughs> no, nah, I was drinking a lot of water. Oh, they allow you to keep doing that. Yes, yes. So you could um, sell pee. So yeah. the water wouldn't come out your butt, though. No, it didn't. Well, I don't know how the human body works. You it's know an what? amazing I, thing. I wasn't drinking water. I was drinking the Gatorade because there was so much stuff to drink. I didn't want to drink more stuff. Yeah. Anyways, that's not important. Do you have a zipper bracelet? Yeah, my daughter got these for, uh, uh, she got these as Valentine's presents nice. for all her class. And she gave me one, so I wear it. Does it zip? Yeah, it unzips. Whoa. Yeah, because in like, okay, you can, she shaped them into shapes of hearts on oh. the cards. So then they all got bracelets. I love that. Okay, anyways. This is about your poop story. Go yes. Ahead. I went into the room. It was dimly lit. Uh, they knocked me out. I, I love how anesthesia works. It's kind of like the person's like, okay, we're doing it. <clears throat> and then like mentally, like, okay, I don't okay. feel it. Yeah, I don't feel nothing's it. Nothing's happening. And they're like, oh, okay, I feel it. And you're just gone. Yeah. And then I woke up in the in the room. Did your butthole hurt? No, it didn't hurt. Hmm. Okay. You gotta quit putting stuff out there. All right. I left the, <laughs> I left a moment of silence. I don't know if we want to keep this part in. Yeah. Okay. I will say this. Before... I went in, I had I, I could have gone to the bathroom, but I didn't need to. I was like, okay, I, I can go to the bathroom right now. That's going to help you and your stuff. Sure. And she was like, not needed. The <laughs> tool has a suction on it to remove the liquid as it's examining. And I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> so I wake up from my anesthesia and all the docs leave the room. I get dressed again. And Is there as- just like a water park in there? Yes. <laughs> I get up and look, and there's a <laughs> foot diameter spot of just like yellow poop juice. <laughs> okay, we, we, we've lost it. Fecal I matter. wanted to see all the doctors that are just like they were at they were at the flume, <laughs> the flume ride. And they were standing on the on the bridge, <laughs> and I was like, I told you, motherfuckers, I could have handled this. <laughs> they didn't let me handle it, so I pooped on their on their bed. Well, listen, you gave them. Every opportunity, you can wash yourself clean yes. of, of you know, guilt. Yeah, there was a suction failure. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> we need more suction. Wow, we can't stop it. And okay. that that was my colonoscopy experience. Everything's good. Oh, I had a a polyp that was removed. Oh, okay, like a small one. Okay, it's sent to my doctor to see if it's cancerous. If it is, I have to go back in five years. Oh god, kind of like a it's kind of like a a mole on your skin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same thing. Um. And then I had like some tiny versions of those other things I can't remember the name of. Stalagmites. Yeah, I had stalagmites in my rectum. Okay. Well, it's good that it's over. And if it makes you feel any better, um, you, I think you're supposed to get well, your first one when you're 50. But yes. I, but I'm supposed to get one earlier because I'm diabetic. Oh. So I think I have to get one when I'm 45 or something. Okay. So that's like five years away. So the good news is, goody peepees. <laughs> That in five years, we get to relive this story as I share my experience. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. You're assuming this is going to be around in five years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're already at like, what, year three? This is freaking crazy. It feels yeah. like we just started. So We have no reason to stop doing it, you know? No, there's always stupid shit we can talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about what we painted. Yes. Um, I painted, I started to paint Blade from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, uh, painting black skin tone um, is challenging. And I'll talk about that more in the uh, after part. Oh, yeah. So you're going to lay down some knowledge. Yeah. Zenithly primed it and then started to paint the skin. And I just like got stuck on the face. I was just painting the face the entire stream. because I was just like trying out things and adjusting things and things weren't working. Um, And so, yeah, I didn't get very far. I think one of the reasons why darker skin tones are so difficult is that... um, Skin is uh, very reflective. Yeah. And so light, you know, there's a pretty big contrast in, in the shininess. But That's for true. fairer skin tones, it's easier to pull it off because you're already starting so much lighter as a, as a neutral. 
But with a darker skin tone, you still have to have the the same level of brights Mm -hmm. as you do with someone with fair skin. So it feels like you're making these big jumps. But if you don't do those big jumps, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look like skin. Yeah. It looks like cloth. Yeah. I think I struggle with it because it's it's mostly shadow. It's mostly dark color, right? Yeah. And so it's kind of hard to see what's going on until you add in highlights. But you can't do too many highlights because then it doesn't look like the color it's supposed to look. Right. Yeah. And and you have to, they have to be placed in just the right spot where the light would naturally reflect on the human face. Otherwise it reads us off because we're so used to looking at faces in the real world. So it's like, no, that doesn't look right. So I think it looks pretty good though. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, that model is badass. I'd never even seen this model before. Yeah. It's I am, super cool. I'm shocked, honestly. Um, I, I know that some of the MCP models aren't like as dynamic as that one, but that one is amazing. Yeah. I mean, when you're dealing with uh, uh, superhero stuff, like one of the, the pinnacles of, of kind of visual understanding of superhero is action poses, is high drama poses. Mm-hmm. Um, even when they're not like jumping down acrobatically, when you think of like Spider-Man pose, right? Oh yeah. Or you think like Wolverine chink, yeah. or you think of like Iron Man and the ground that right. he just landed. Ground pound. You're right. Like he, they're not like mid action, but something about the way the human body is posed on those, that those, um, artists that did the comic books in comic book form, like they had a whole way of inventing how to make a person look badass when it's not moving in 2D into mm. show that there was a bunch of action that just happened. Right. And, or it's in the midst of happening. So. That's a great point. Mm. I feel like looking at comic books for references on posture would be great when developing a concept for a miniature. I a hundred percent. Yeah. I think so many miniatures are, it's a really cool aesthetic. It's a really cool design, but there's not enough drama in the pose. Like you could just, Go grab whatever random Avengers comic book from Mm -hmm. 96 and pull through and you'd find a cool pose in there somewhere. It's like, oh, my God, this my guy would look super cool if he was looking like this. Yeah, I for sure. I've done that. I've like I have that in my list of my notebook list of things that I want to do when I eventually make my own miniatures. And that is one of the things that I write down. So now everyone's going to steal it and they're going to have way cooler. They're all going to look cool like this blade guy right here. Something just fall from the ceiling? <laughs> no. I just spit Did on you your just head. spit on me? I'm sorry. Dude, first you shoot it all out your bee hole, <laughs> and now you shoot it all out your mouth hole. <laughs> What'd you paint? Oh, okay, okay. I painted a couple things. The first thing is I painted a War Master figure for a recent video. Mm. Uh, I was like, what's War Master? War Master is a 10 yeah. millimeter scale fantasy. Yeah, yeah. It's like Inquisitor so, is the 40K version. No, it isn't. Yeah, Inquisitor is the big it's one. The big it's 54 one, yeah. mils. You're right, you're right. Um, <clears throat> there is a 40k one. I can't think of it either. But uh, so I painted a 10 millimeter figure. Thank God for sexy gags. Holy balls! Those things are tiny. <laughs> yep. Um, the thing that really kind of I took away from that experience was what you have to do in order to create um, contrast and color changes over a tiny, tiny surface, and like kind of what technical approach you take to do that. Um, because you, you have so much less space to work. So you're really limited on what you can try to pull off with that. So I found that just trying to be over exaggerating on building up highlights through thin layers and then really fine glazing was the best way to do it. Although I did do loaded brush on the NMM, um, which actually works really well in tiny surface. Yeah. I watched the video. Yeah. Yeah, So, um, even though I screwed it up a whole bunch of times and it was so tiny, but (laughs) Um, it was, it it still worked. And the other thing I've done for the last couple of days, I've spent yesterday, I spent about six hours and the day before I spent about three or four hours working on my golden demon piece. Nice. Um, so I got a lot of the little bullshit done. I decided that, uh, what I'm doing now is I want to get the whole miniature painted and the base all painted. And then I'm going to go back in and futz. Cool. Yeah. Cause there's a lot, I'm like, I was looking at the skin. I was looking at some of the. The armor panels that I had done, and I I know, like, oh, I want to change this. I want to change the level of highlight, the reflection on certain spots, and add more depth to the skin. I have some really good ideas I'm excited to do, but I'm like, I'm not going to do those right now. I need to get everything colored in so I can make help me make better decisions. Okay. And I'll feel like I'm closer to the end, and then I I don't feel like, well, I can't waste too much time on this because I still have to do that. But I spent a ton of time yesterday um, doing... 
Michael Pisarski style NMM on this sucker. And he's got these big, the crazy scratches, things. The lines. Yeah. yeah. And over, I don't know, on one blade, I think. Now, he's got, uh, I'm not going to show the pictures of it because I want to, you guys just have to listen uh, what this thing is going to look like. But it's a weird shaped blades, weird shaped surfaces with a lot of weird angles and curves and stuff and so it took me a lot of time to figure it out and i don't think it's 100 percent, but i'm to the point where once i go back through and the glaze and the colors i think that's where it kind of really pulls in the colors sure. it pulls it all together but yeah i'm really happy with the blends and the the brightness and the reflections and everything but yeah a lot of time on that it's like i don't have very many segments of time between now and adepticon where i can try to crush out a a bunch of work and if i don't do it when i have some time it's just not going to get done or i'm not going to be happy i'm not going to be happy anyway that's just the name of the game you know when you put in a piece for competition you're always like uh i wish i would have had more time with it mm-hmm. at least that's how i feel um i don't know how people that do like 12 pieces or five pieces or whatever is like yeah, but wouldn't you? I would just want to go back and make the first one really, really good. Yeah, you're always like, that's oh, not. It's not done, but the competition's here, so it's got to be done enough. So I just don't want to be where it's like I'm not proud of it. I was like, it doesn't have to win for me to be proud to be like, look, I did that. You know, I didn't phone it in. I didn't rush it. I didn't whatever. Yeah, it's there. So just give me the Slayer sword, and we can all be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Three things. When you were speaking, a tiny little bubble came out of your mouth and landed on the microphone. Oh, look at that. It was very cute. Yeah, boop, boop, boop. Uh, second, I was watching your your video of Paint Tiny Dude, and I, and I I heard you mention Loaded Brush, and the hardest thing with Loaded Brush for me, well, okay, I don't even know if this is the hardest thing, but at the moment is getting the right amount of white on yes. the end of the brush. And as you were going in, I was like, that's, that's like, too much right. white. Yeah. yeah. And so you put it on, you're like, shit. And you wiped it off and you did it yeah. again. <laughs> and I found that that is actually, it's it's very hard because usually you need just a tiny, tiny I know. Amount. It's a tiny amount. Yeah. The good thing is if you're using the heavy body white, it's easier to grab. But usually it, it like, it's like sticky. it grabs too much. Yeah. Um, but what I found, because that heavy body white takes a lot longer to time to dry because mm. it's thicker i'll put down my initial line and then i like on my hand or paper towel i'll just like pull off the rest of the white just sure. on the tip and then i'll go right back in that's what you did yep and it works it's if you can get it perfect without having to do that it tends to you end up have more success but it's so hard right so, it's so. very difficult and the third thing i can imagine i think i know what that blade looks like on that that guy we're talking about and it's mostly flat right um yeah, well, <laughs> there's two of them, but they're oh boy. they have multiple like angles. So they have a section that's flat, and then it's like, and then the actual blade edges are like concave. Okay, they're, like, okay, curved down, and so yeah. the curved sections, the flat sections, you can kind of work with the light of where it's brighter here, and then on the flat section that's next to it, it's it's darker, and then you kind of alternate and you mm-hmm. kind of futz it around. But dealing with the curve, how light is going to work over that curve is. I kind of got to a point where I'm like, this is not exactly how light looks would work on this surface, but it's dramatic and it looks close. See, so I, I think the opposite t- experience. I think a flat surface is impossible to do correctly, but if it has any kind of volume, any kind of curve shape, roundness to it, then it'll have more indication. Well, I don't mean, when I say curve, I don't mean curve like a axis head. Okay. When I say curve, I mean... There's, if you're like looking down the, a blade of a sword. Yeah. Okay. Instead of it being like a, a, a pyramid shape, right? Yeah. You're looking down the blade. Instead of being a flat pyramid, it's curved down. Yeah. That curve under a tight edge of the blade of how that curve is reflecting different amounts of the light. Yeah. Is, you know, <laughs> that's tough. It's called a hollow grind. Yeah. Uh, oh, sure. I watch too many... Uh, the fuck is the name of that youtube channel where they make swords from video games and anime uh, oh yeah yeah the crazy dude out in the wilderness that makes him no it's a it's like a whole studio it's the all i remember from the trailer right now is reforged mm. it's like title of the show reforged and then oh. it's like it's 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 a well-produced show and they make awesome swords they made a chain sword once a legit chain sword with a, like with the engine from a chainsaw it's amazing. Did, did, did the chainsaw blade yeah. actually run? Yeah. Wow. It was, and also it was to scale. It was fucking huge. There's no way you could wield that. Oh yeah. I mean, I think 
I don't know if they could hold it. I don't know if two guys held it, but it was it was massive. <laughs> it was cool. But it's pretty sweet on your wall. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I painted. I've been painting, painting, painting. Today, this episode is sponsored by 1985 Games, and they're sharing with us their miniature crate subscription box. They partner with brands from all over the world to get you some amazing minis delivered to your door each and every month because that's what you need. You don't want to go out to the store to buy the minis. You want to be surprised with awesome minis that just show up at your doorstep. And a constant supply of them, like an (laughs) IV, just keeping you alive. Slow drip. Yes. One of 1985 Games' goals is to have other people discover smaller brands like themselves. So a lot of the brands you'll find in the box are from smaller companies. All the models included in each monthly crate are crafted by hand in resin. So you're going to get some really high quality minis. Each mini crate costs 40 bucks and inside it you'll find between 40 and $100 worth of miniatures. Another great thing about the monthly miniature crate is there's no commitment. If you want to do it for a month and you want to take a month off, you don't have to sign a long-term contract. You can just jump on and jump off whenever you need more minis. So we're like the sleazy boyfriend of the miniature world yes so we'll always slide in when you're at your lowest point and you need the most minis yeah so okay yeah so <laughs> slide into the dms yeah. of a miniature <laughs> is that like kind of painting it but not painting it like i don't even know what that means <laughs> each crate contains between two and four miniatures along with discount codes for the companies in that box and also promotional pieces i don't know what a promotional piece is but now i have to sign up to Sticker, find out stickers I don't know. It could be like you get Scarfs? a you get a gerbil. What? I don't know. You, you could get a gerbil. We're not saying that you will. Right, but you could. Maybe a Warhammer themed candle. <gasps> <gasps> a big thank you to 1985 Games and make sure you check on the link in the video description below or in the show notes to find out how you can get signed up for your monthly miniature crate. Let's get back to the episode. All right, we got a topic today. That's uh, that's why we do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the main reason this thing exists. But also, we talk about other things. But we're going to talk about the main topic right now, right here. Scott, what is our topic? Thank you for the I, setup. I'm not saying that because I have no idea what the topic is. That's not at all what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Uh, I had a conversation, an interview with a artist who's a YouTuber. His name is Alpe F.A. Um, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Um, he's German and he does 2D work, painted work on YouTube. And he's both dimensions, both dimensions, not just the one D, both the D's. Uh, and <laughs> both he, the X and the Y axis <laughs> does he paint. Imagine. I only paint one D. Yeah. <laughs> like, I only paint across the X axis. Of, of pixels width of fucking content. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyways. He is a phenomenal painter. His uh, social media accounts will be linked down in the show notes. Check him out. Um, but he comes from the, the the background of being a fine artist. Yeah, you can see some thumbnails there. Yeah. A, lot um, of, a lot of freaking subscribers, balls. Yeah. So he has a lot of interesting things that you know that we don't have to deal with uh, in his uh, in his area of art. I'll call it that. And when we were talking, one thing he mentioned in the interview was that the, the what was so appealing about the hobby, which is why he was chatting with me, he's looking into miniature painting, okay. um, was that there seems to be a real sense of community. Mm. Um, and it's something I've taken for granted. I, I, I didn't even think about that. And then he went on to further explain what the art community can look like in his experience. Obviously, it doesn't look like it's for everyone, but maybe it's a prevailing thing. He's like, he mentioned a couple things. Have you ever noticed that people call artists professional artists? But you never call a carpenter, a professional carpenter, a professional software engineer. It's like, I'm a software engineer. It, it implied that you're professional. Right. There's, there's a delineation between the two things. Sure. Okay. And because of that, or, or, or for that, it seems like people who are in the field of painting, of illustration, of fine art, are always trying to make a career out of it. Okay. Um, and because of that, not only are they... They have a little bit of animosity or sure. jealousy toward other painters, but also they're they're kind of they, they close guard their knowledge. Right. Not as much sharing going on. Obviously, again, this does not apply to all artists, but it was something that he was talking about in his experience. Um, and so he said, I, I'm looking forward to getting into the hobby to experience the joyful community that is the one in the hobby. And you know, people always talk about 
the community. And I kind of always take it for granted. It's like, because it's always there. It's always present. It's part of the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, but today, I kind of want to talk about our favorite experiences that are community-driven ones. Um, and I want you guys to share yours in the comment, comment section below. Cool. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll wrap my mind around this. But I, I, I totally get what he's coming from in terms of just kind of the the natural state of it it feels like in the in the traditional art forms it's it's less about an environment of sharing and teaching it's more about your own personal growth and success and notoriety right and here while there is that aspect I absolutely think that, that that does exist in the miniature hobby i think it's a much finer sliver of the big delicious pie that is our hobby <laughs> and more of it and i think a lot of it is kind of just the way that um the hobby has grown especially around things like youtube and social media uh, that people are drawn to and connected more to learning engaging feeling like we're all on this ride together okay and that gives a totally different dynamic you know, if everybody or a large percentage of people that were in this hobby were doing it to be professionals, might make a living off of it. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think it would it would look more and more like I totally agree, like that traditional yeah. art form. But yeah. we're doing it in our free time. We're doing it for fun. We're doing it to pew pew other little pew pewers on the on the table, and we're. You know, it just look cool on my my shelf at home or show my buddies and stuff like that. So yeah, it's just a, it's a different mindset. It I is saw, a hobby. Yeah, right. It's not a career. Right. Yeah, but I think there's a plenty of people that paint as a hobby. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. There, there has to be. You know, right. there has to be. But when I think of people that like to um, paint or they like to draw or whatever, and they're not trying to do it professionally. Um, I and again I don't know that side very well but it doesn't feel like there are like a big collaboration of people that are kind of all in the same boat together and they feel like you're you become more like a community it feels more still more separated but on your own individual journey where us it's like oh, we're all in this together mm. right yeah yeah okay so let's talk you 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 had something in mind that that about your experience within the community that, that that jumps out to you yeah so i don't want to talk about like big events like adepticon 2018 yeah i want to talk about like a specific thing mm -hmm. that happened okay uh but i'll get it started off here um one thing i really liked is when you and i went to the source and did a paint and take with kdm miniatures mm -hmm. and everyone came out we were all painting together and i got to walk around and talk to everyone that was there and see things that they were working on and they brought projects that they had already finished that i could see um and that was a lot of fun uh to be there and experience that yeah i think that's a really good example um that just everybody's kind of there for the same purpose. So you yeah. kind of, it, it goes back into the, we're all in this in the same boat. We're all showing up. We're going to get to paint and they got some paints for us to use. They got cool minis, whatever. Yeah. And it just, it creates a natural environment of kind of uh, entertainment. You know, instead of us going to a movie this, this afternoon, mm -hmm. we're going to go to the store and paint a miniature. Yeah. Um, and I know that um, to kind of push that or to show that as, as value is that, um, WizKids does this for Dungeons and Dragons where they have what they call paint and take kits. Yeah. And you can, they often have at, at gaming stores, they have paint and take nights. So it's everything in the box that you need to paint the miniature. It's got the miniature. It's got all the paints you need. It's got a brush. And the whole purpose is, is community. Is that like, okay, this Saturday at 6 PM, we're doing the paint and take for the zombie ogre. You know, we got 12 kits and you know, you come in and you guys can all do it together. And we've done that in our local store. And it's super cool. It's just like you see pe people, parents with their kids. You see people that are D and D players. You see people that have just. Uh, I've been kind of interested in, in painting miniatures. You have people that like they want to bring more people into their community locally, and so they kind of naturally fall into this realm of of being a mentor or helping. You know, it's like they don't need to know everything, but they've done enough to where it's like, oh, yeah, make sure you put a little water on that first, and blah, blah, like little things. And that makes it feel almost like a, a community art class and less about 
you know, oh, I'm taking this and it's going to be my thing. And then I'll never see these people again. Yeah. So, so I think that's a, that's a, a big part of that. Okay. So that's, that's a really good example. Yeah. Um, I want to share one kind of my introduction into the miniature painting hobby. Okay. Um, so I was always a D and D player and my buddy, Joshy, sexy teeth, Joshy, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, he was like, Oh man, they're doing a, a painting competition thing at the, our local little hobby store. And it was mostly like an RC cars store, but they also carried some Warhammer. And he's like, you could go there and they give you a model and you just have to paint it. And then, you know, whatever. And he's like, Oh, this is cool. We just get a free model that we can use for Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. So I show up there. I talked to the guy. He was really excited about Warhammer. Told me all about it. Showed me all the kits. Um, showed me all the different models that I could pick from, from the first, first edition age of Sigmar starter box. And, He's like, yeah, and then we'll do this and blah, blah, blah. And so I did that. I came back. I got to see everybody's in their little case. There's When I show up again, there's some other guys that were there, and they were all looking at each other. He's like, oh, man, you painted that. That's super cool. How'd you do that? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, it just became like this is like instant friends with people not like close friends but like you had something in common that was something that everybody put time into and they all were open and didn't have an ego about it yeah and so i immediately was like gosh this is super cool and and there's all these people that are doing this and it's a thing that i can do on my own as i get free time but it scratches both itches okay where it's it's a thing where i like to do on my own but it's also um, it's not just that it's such an easy connection to other people and there's something else aligned with it and that's the gaming side and learning about that and why people are excited and all people at, at different levels of the spectrum, which I think is a big part of this, why the miniature hobby is so interesting okay. is because of its roots with gaming. So not everybody is searching for the same or a similar thing. So everyone that watches your YouTube channel may have a different expectation, a different goal, or a different part of the hobby that they're attached to more. And so you get to deal with people that, yeah, they all paint to some degree, but some of it is just means to an end. Some of it is like, I want my stuff to look cooler, but it's still all about the game. Some are like, I'm 50-50. Some of it's like, yeah, maybe I'll ever, I'll play this game sometimes because I like to paint this army or these models. But it's all over the place. And it's really interesting because it's never like stale in dealing with new people, new painters, you know, new nerd friends you meet because everybody's got like this, this different level of, of what they're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, and to me that makes it, it keeps it super interesting because like the first five minutes of a conversation, I can really get a good feel for, you know, not necessarily where they're at in their hobby journey, but what part of their hobby journey excites them the most. And when they, we get to talking about painting that influences how deep I get into the painting stuff or what kinds of things I like to talk about with them or, you know, that kinds of stuff. So it, it just keeps it really fresh for me. Okay. You mentioned when you're having conversations with people about like the things you painted from the age of Sigmar starter box mm -hmm. that there was an ego involved. And I'm curious if you think that is intrinsic to our hobby or just those group of guys you were with were just more selfless than a typical person. I don't know what you're comparing it to, but so I was kind of curious. What do you think? Um, from my experience as, as like, as my bubble has grown bigger in my exposure to like the online oh, version okay. of, of, of community within this hobby. Gotcha. I think that the vast majority of people are pretty ego free about it. Yeah. I think the vast majority, which is one of the reasons why when you look at our community, our miniature painting community, and it's not all sunshines and rainbows, and it's not all like everything is awesome, but a vast majority of it that makes it really good and really positive is that most people are pretty ego free about it and they're pretty humble about it. And they're, they know that the, like, I know I have places to improve and even people that are amazing painters. Um, I think when I think of that, I think of a couple people that I think of is one, I think Vincey V is the most humble dude. He's an amazing painter, but he's not slinging his dick around about it. <laughs> um, David Colwell, oh one my of my gosh. favorite painters on the planet is the, he's, he doesn't think he, he, he actively will tell you like, oh, I don't, I don't think this is very good. And I don't, I don't, I, I don't like, you know, all this, like I was embarrassed to, you know, blah, 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 but I'll do, do it anyway. And, blah, right. and it's like, his stuff is amazing. Yeah. I think. There's a certain personality type 
that seems more prevalent in our hobby in a very good way. So there's more people that are maybe more introverted, maybe more people that are um, maybe introspective. We have a fair amount of our hobby people are pretty smart people and pretty self-aware, right? Now, that said, there is a, there is a contingent that is not that way. <laughs> But you're going to have that is the more people you have that are interested in a the thing, there's going to be all types. Right. And there are going to be those people that are really cutthroat or vindictive or, or jaded about things. And and I think the best thing is, is that most of us, um, you know, most of the goody peepees aren't that way. And I think it, it makes it for a more engaging uh, hobby. It feels like the barrier of getting involved and wanting to do it myself is pretty low because you don't feel this pressure or this negative energy from people. They're like, yeah, you should try it. Awesome. Oh, you've never, I see it all on Twitch, all the time on Twitch streams. Oh, you've, you've never painted a miniature before? Let's talk about it. This is what we're doing. Blah, blah, blah. Like people want you to be excited. They want you to try it. And yeah. I think that those kind of stewards for the hobby, and they're not just the streamers, it's people in the community, people that are on the Facebook groups and that kind of stuff want other people there because this is not like there's only so many loaves of bread and if you come and sit at the table that means there's less loaves for me it doesn't work that way right so it's a pretty awesome thing yeah yeah all right speaking of twitch i have a community thing uh, regarding twitch um i hosted a stream after my stream was last friday and when, when we when all my viewers got in there and i got in none of the fun too we started gifting this dude subs and I don't know how many he got, but I think it was in the neighborhood of between 30 to 50, somewhere in there. Wow. Um, and it just felt super cool. Like you mentioned these th these these qualities of the hobbyist, mm -hmm. right? And charity it seemed to be one that was on display massively there. Mm -hmm. And that was super heartwarming. And we were all kind of just trying to get him to not be able to paint because he had to deal with all the notifications <laughs> that were happening. Because um, he had his sub notifications set up where if I gifted five subs, he'd get five notifications. Oh, yeah. That each take, whatever, seven, eight seconds. And so when you have 50 to go through, it's kind of like I can't paint. Um, and so it's kind of a funny thing. But uh, I noticed this a lot on Twitch mm -hmm. um, at large. When I f was first streaming from 5 to 7 a.m. Uh, like two years ago, um, it seemed like all the streamers were really uh, aware of what the other streamers were doing and aware of their schedules and they would all work together to create not like a seamless stream of content, but they wouldn't step on each other's toes mm -hmm. and they were all, it was so much more community driven than YouTube ever was. Mm -hmm. um, it's very TV guide like. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I will say that as of late, YouTube has become way more community driven for me because that was back in the day when there were like three YouTubers. Uncle Adam, uh, Vincey V, Vincey V, The Doctor. Uh, I think Sir Astro was peeing back then. Yes, too. Sir Astro, but he's kind of always kept to himself. Yep. And then I was getting started. Uh, but now. Literal best of all painting, too. Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, but the, we, were, we were like together. Like now we're in like a Discord channel, all of us together, like mm -hmm. chatting, like fucking sharing the most batshit comments that you've ever seen before. Dude, there was a, a gravity denier that commented on my videos. And he was like, come here and prove to me gravity exists. And I was like, okay. Obviously, <laughs> obviously there's something else he's referring to other than the fact that my phone does that. <laughs> yeah. So he probably would be like, that's not gravity. That's something else. Uh, but anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, that, that thing in Twitch was super cool. And Twitch at large, I think, is a huge source of community in the hobby. Yeah, I, uh, I I think that there is a uh, the sense of like real time interaction in the real time community in the chat that happens there that yes. you see familiar faces. It seems kind of people that make the the same dad jokes all the time, or they, <laughs> or they you know talk about similar things. They're like you know make sure you paint the palette hand chapter next every time that they're in your chat or whatever like <laughs> you get to know people a bit even though you don't really know them you do and they have conversations that are ongoing themselves and that's one of the coolest things that i see in mini painting streams is so much of the conversation is asking the streamer question or kind of commenting on something you're doing but then there's a another portion that is them the chats all interacting with each other and they're like, hey, what are you doing? Blah, 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 whatever. And like, that is where a real community comes in. Um, and they, it's the method that YouTube 
has doesn't really foster that. It's not a knock on YouTube. It's just it's it's not set up to do that. Right. Right. People aren't having ongoing conversations in the comment section of your video. Yeah. Right. Um, if you have your own Discord server for like your channel or for your friends or for your followers or whatever, um, I think that even brings it up another level right there are people that are helping each other all the time and they're critiquing each other's minis and they're saying hey i'm really proud of this and people mm -hmm. are like, yeah it looks great whatever have you tried have you thought about doing this and blah 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 like that that sense of community since i have my discord server now i feel that feels super cool yeah like i i try to be active in there i you know i try to help i try to people ask for feedback and just chat about whatever but i also feel like I don't have to be there all day every day because people are enjoying and engaging and making friends and whatever. And I've got some voice channels and people are hanging out in voice channels while they're painting because they've you know got to know each other a little bit and that kind of stuff. So um, that's another level of taking a solitary hobby that is miniature painting, which is really weird that we're talking about community yeah. in this hobby right. that is in in inherently so incredibly solitary. Right. And I think maybe a part of that is is the desire to not be so secluded. Right. And that it's a hobby and not a career. And right. I'm not trying to share it. I'm not trying to hide away. It just happens to be that I'm alone most times while painting. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end, you're also creating. And you want people to see what you've created. Most Absolutely. people do. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and whether it's your first mini or your hundredth mini or whatever, that you're like, this is what I did. And people because in general the community is fairly supportive and helpful like you get this positive reinforcement by being engaging in the community whereas if you are an artist and you feel like the people that you put that out to are in some way shape or form viewed as your competitors one are you going to be thinking about their criticisms or comments their critiques their um, things that they liked about your piece what, are you going to be looking at that through that through a different lens? You're like, are they trying to knock me? Do they really mean it? Are they actually helpful here? Are they yeah. just trying to mess with me? Like, you know, that kind of thing. Because you're kind of, whether it's how much of it's reality or in your own head, the uh, environment that fosters competition. So, yeah. I, was, I had more of a thought and it just completely left my brain. Okay. Are you commenting on what i said or were you adding another thing i think you kind of did a little bit of both yeah i just it's all interweaving in there <laughs> a little bit that's all right okay uh at adepticon another area of community that i love i have several haunts as do you at adepticon one is fort wapple oh the yeah other one that i want to talk about is the cases oh baby okay it's gonna be different this year because gd requires way more cases than crystal yeah. brush did but there's this area when you first walk into the exposition hall that is on the left. Uh, there's like a faux wall there that separates the, one of the gaming areas mm -hmm. from like this, this the kind of like, what is it? Like six, seven cases. Yeah. Not, not many. Yeah. And then the judges table. Mm -hmm. um, and there are always people standing in front of that, those cases. Yeah. And everyone is, everyone there is like a hardcore display painting nerd, you yeah. know, like, and they're all, they all want to talk about fucking bits and bobs. Yeah. They want, and they, they love to gab. And so I love to gab too. And so I always mm -hmm. go there and very often you'll see some rock star painters there mm -hmm. just hanging out and chatting. You'll kind of like fucking, you know, give them a little elbow, kind of get into a conversation with one of them, get some feedback, be like, Hey, my models in the case over there. Can I get some feedback? And they'll walk mm -hmm. over there with you mm -hmm. and they'll talk about it. Um, a specific memory I have is when uh, is when Ben was looking at your your piece. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're getting feedback on it, mm -hmm. um, and he gave you advice that I gave you. And I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'm as smart as Ben comments." <laughs> <laughs> you should have listened to me, John. Uh, it was about painting his base rim a black satin, so it wasn't anything critical. Um, yeah, but yeah, that was just funny. He's like, um, "Yeah, yeah." It was just so much. That was such a big base rim. I know. It was, it was just like, man, I'd use like a bottle and a half of that. But I'm like, <laughs> I ain't got $12 to spend on this base rim, Ben. Come on. Uh, another thing, I was talking to Tom Ailes, and he was talking about this uh, resin uh, Dark Yaldar ship. It's the big, the Tantalus. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And uh, he's an appreciator of other forms in the miniature hobby. And so what he did in the Tantalus was he did rigging. He added all the strings for all of the sails. And so 
I was able to stand by the case and he could just talk to me about that process, what it was like, what the painting process was like. And that was super cool. And like, you'll never get to experience that because Tom doesn't have like an online presence. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to have one. And so to be able to do that at, a, at an event like that is super awesome. I remember, um, this is the, the last, no, I can't remember was which Adepticon. It's been so many years since we've had one. <laughs> it's coming up so quick. It's coming up so quick. I know. What um, we, or a month away, right? Ish? Yeah, I, I, I re, yeah, it'll be from when this episode goes live, it'll be less than a month. Yeah. But as we sit today, it's like, I don't go right around a month from today. We'll probably be getting in the vehicle and heading, heading out Josh, down to South Park. Sexy Teeth Joshy. Sexy Teeth Jockey, Joshy's uh, Ford, Ford SUV. And we're going to go. Ooh, it's I just got pitch. notified. <gasps> the top sign has arrived in my office. Oh which man, means, this is breaking news. Which means there is nothing stopping us from finishing the setup and doing our episodes there. Oh baby. So now I need to fucking put it in high gear. And yeah. finish well, the you got up. other gears. Things uh, that was something else. Uh we're, we're jumping in the news that's something that you should talk about in the news section yes. you didn't put in there. Right. About yourself. Yeah. You self as fuck. <laughs> I, I gotta fart so bad. What? <laughs> These mics have pretty good like noise rejection, but there's a chance you heard that. <laughs> okay. A little barking spider down there. <laughs> oh, is there ducks in here? <laughs> um, okay. All right. I want to talk about something about that too. You made me remember at the, at the case. First yes. of all, at my, my first year at Adepticon and I had something in the case and I was all very, you know, you walk up, I was like the new kid. I was like, I don't know what to do. I've never been here. Yeah. All these people talking. And by the end of that first year, you know, People, it's I. I had something in there, so people are like, "Oh, I heard you did this." I was like, "Who told you that?" I don't know any of you people. <laughs> like, it was just super cool. And then I remember when I was turning my piece in, Anthony Wang, Wang, Wang yeah, was there. Yeah, yeah, and he was turning in stuff too. And he had a really awesome piece. And then also he had in his case, he's like, "Oh, I did these," and I'm like, "Wow, I never met the guy before. I didn't even know who he was. Just super nice guy, amazing miniature painter." come mm -hmm. to find out yeah and just super cool dude and he was like um he's like oh yeah dude i also i painted these and he pulled them out and they were uh orc underworld's war band yeah that has the four dudes in it that he painted like ninja turtles <laughs> so he painted them they're all green orcs but he painted all their accent colors because they have like various bits of cloth all around them like the you know leonardo donatello michelangelo and Raphael. And he's like, and he painted them in kind of a cell shaded style, but really, really well done cell shaded style. And he's, I'm like, holy crap, dude, that's amazing. He's like, yeah. He's like, There's, I just had a lot of fun with this. I just finished them up. I'm like, yeah. Are you going to put them into the unit category? He's like, oh, I didn't think I was going to enter it. I'm like, no, what? you need to enter those in the unit <laughs> category. I don't know you. I've never met you before, but you need to do that because those are awesome and people are going to love to see those. And he ended up entering them. Nice. I was like, I don't even know this guy. I was like, come on, man. Like, I, Maybe I was just like super excited. He's like, okay, weird guy. Just leave me alone. I'll put him in there. <laughs> I'm already in line. I'll just do it. But it was just like a person I never met before. We're talking over the painting things. I was asking him about how he got the crisp black lines on all those things. And how did you keep it from, you know, getting too gaudy looking? Because it wasn't. And it was, it was just a really fun conversation. And that was like the very first day of my very first Adepticon, putting something in there, didn't even see most of the stuff in the case yet. And you're just, you're amongst people that are passionate, excited about the same kinds of stuff as you. Yeah. And there's no reason for you to be anything but friends because most of us don't have a big local community that really loves the same kind of stuff as we do. Mm -hmm. And so when you can get a chance to, whether it's online or it's in person, to find those people it just feels right. Like it feels like this is really why I come back to doing this. And it's not the case maybe for everybody, but I think the more the people that I find keep at it the most and get really excited and don't go into big ebbs and flows of painting or not painting or getting interested in the game or not in, getting interested in the game is that they're more involved with the community. Absolutely, yeah. You know. Um, and you always see something cool that someone's painted. And so that I always have finding inspiration and people are like, oh my gosh, did you see the Sergio Calvo piece? Blah, blah, blah. I want to figure out how he did the, the, the armor like that. And then like good buddy Stu, he, he found the same 54 millimeter model that Sergio had done 
and he tried to copy it. He tried to replicate it. Like he was doing like the great art heist of 20, <laughs> 2018 or whenever he painted this thing where he was like trying to make a copy and then he was going to like switch him out. Yeah, he's forging a replica. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's Ocean's Eleven shit right here. Um, <laughs> and Ocean's he, 12. It, it looked really freaking good, you know? And so it was just like him talking through his process and, and talking to uh, other friends and talk, showing it the, the steps on the Discord and, and getting feedback and people were able to look one-to-one and be like, oh, if you look at his, he did this weird thing here and like learning and other people learning from not even painting, but talking through with somebody else who's going through a process. Um, because this is such a time intensive hobby. I think something we don't think about, see, I'm just transitioning to a different topic. <laughs> no, nah, I don't even breathe. Um, <laughs> because this is such a time intensive hobby. M- many of us realize quickly the value of learning from others without having to do it all ourselves. Because if you are forced to learn, uh, learn how the Renaissance painters accomplished a thing through trial and error yourself, it will take your lifetime to figure that out. But if you have all these other amazing painters that are also willing to share and willing to teach and willing to talk about and willing to release PDF guides or willing to just have a conversation with the stranger or talk about it on a Facebook post or have a video about it, like that becomes the norm. And then people that are exposed to those things kind of fall into line with this is I get good feedback. I feel good about learning. And then they're more willing to share and learn. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Fantastic. I'll take a breath now. Okay. So, you talked about your experience with Anthony when you were submitting models. One I want to talk about is really early on when I was little, um, I went to the games workshop in Gurney Mills, Illinois. Um, And I was 10. Mm -hmm. And I'd always go with a friend, and the friend's mom would drive us, or my mom would drive us. And we'd hang out there the entire day. And I'm trying to think. As a thirty-year-old, mm-hmm. as I as I am now, if I were to, be if your forced, mom drop you off, no, no, <laughs> if I were to be in a GW every weekend or whatever, two weekends in a month, hanging out with, you know, a couple ten-year-olds and other people my age, would that annoy me? Would I like not want to do that? It doesn't matter because everyone that I was hanging out with there, the store employees, all the hobbyists, they were all super fucking nice. Mm-hmm. I remember some advice I got in fantasy. You had standard bears. And one problem that some of them had was they were top heavy and they would fall over. Yeah, all that pooter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I remember talking to one guy who played Bretonia, and his trick is he would uh, he would put washers or dimes and he would glue them into the bottom of the base, make them bottom heavy, mm. and they would they would stick. And I remember talking about that advice. I remember actually shadowing the manager of the store for career day. To, cause I, oh my gosh cause I wanted to be a GW store manager when I grew up like I don't know why I did that honestly I just wanted to go to GW during a school day. yeah 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 That's um, good reason. hey cuz I'm here helping for the day can I get a pot of that uh, Carrick stone yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly uh, and I mean he was super nice he drove me around he got me lunch and but yeah I remember being there did he have to close the store so you guys no. could go get lunch no they had more than one employee uh, yes the, uh, all of GW stores I think back then I mean not all of them but most of them had multiple employees yeah I don't think that's the case anymore it not yeah it isn't um, but I don't ever remember having a thought as a young kid and maybe because I was oblivious that I ever got signals from anyone that they were annoyed by me or didn't want me around Mm. They would all play games with me, mm. probably because I was the easiest W in the world. <laughs> I lost every single fantasy game I played against yeah. someone who was older than me. Yeah. If they made uh, like big posters that you hold in your that you had in your wall when you were kids of of basketball players getting dunked on, yeah, for miniature painters yeah, 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 or yeah. miniature gamers, yeah. you'd be the kid being dunked on in every poster. Yeah, you're just like, Ugh. yeah, they had crushed me constantly. Uh, but like we would go play laser tag in the mall together. We'd go nice. We'd go eat together at the food court. Get some sabaro. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Chinese food sabaro. Um, yeah, it was amazing because I feel like I don't know if I would act like that with little kids, but these these guys, these older hobbyists, uh, were super inviting, and that was really a great way to start my like yeah. hobby. I think um, again tying this into the the uh, the hobby side connected to the painting side, and that's kind of like by nature. They're intrinsically linked. Yeah. Some part of that in wanting to foster a good community. And again, I feel like this is the norm that there are certainly outliers. And I think those outliers are called out a lot and tried to like 
toxic, non-welcoming behavior in the in the gaming and painting and stuff. And I think people do a good job of like calling, you know, calling people out on that when you're not fostering a good environment, yeah. whether or not you're trying to be an asshole. Um, <laughs> it's all about us, you know, being welcoming. It, but the history with the, this these kind of games is you need people to play against right you need to have a good to have a game to have, play with the different people play against a different army all these kinds of things you need people to do it it's not like i can go spend 40 dollars on call of duty go home and just hit quick match mm. and always have somebody to play at my beck and call it right. doesn't work that way with this yeah you need to have a community that plays and you want them to have the cool looking models so the painting kind of goes along with that. And that's why, like, if you get into this hobby from a painting perspective, you know, you'll get gamers in your local area that see you there, like, picking up a new box of Space Marines or whatever, that try to invite you to come out and just like, oh, yeah, we play on Wednesday nights. You just come out and check it out and ask questions or just see how the game goes or whatever because they want you to get you to, to play. And then on the flip side is, like, people that are excited about the painting, you know, They'll be like, oh, man, that looks really cool. You know, you, you know, what's your plan for your army and your scheme and all that kind of stuff? And they kind of just like go hand in hand. But I think a big part of the roots of this is we all need each other in order for these games to survive or to work. Mm. You know, I think that's why when you want to do a we did a league. Um, I really want to get another one going again. Our Age of Sigmar League in our local store. Yeah. You know, we, we did over the course of my first couple of years playing. We, our very first league was an escalation league, and we started with six of us. By the time we got to our third league, about a year and a half later, we were at twenty. Damn. And we, um, and we not only did we had twenty, but we also had more people that were coming in every time that were looking. They're asking questions. They said there was always a because you'd schedule your own games throughout the week at the store, and it was just exposure. And people were learning about it, right? Cool and all that kind of stuff. But if people feel like there's a community around it. There's people to play with that oh, they get yeah. more excited to want to get involved. And it wasn't, we weren't marketing. We didn't have posters. We didn't have a Facebook group. We didn't have anything. We yeah. were just there and we were, you know, scheduling our games and, and having fun. And that was just like, man, it's people just want to feel like, Oh gosh, that there's other people to enjoy this with, um, which can be tough um, based on where you're at in the world. But, I think that's probably directly why the hobby is as big as it's ever been. Whether you're miniature painting for D&D, whether you're miniature painting for art, whether you're miniature painting for war games, whether you're just miniature painting for the fun of it, because the internet presence is big as it's ever been and the online communities and interaction options for you and the ability to, instead of sitting and watching Yellowstone at night, you can sit and watch Sam Lenz paint on Twitch. Hmm. Like you have options for consuming content and entertainment around the thing that you're passionate about. And because it's that way now, the physical location matters a lot less than it used to. So yeah, you have, I mean like, it's not like you're buying models with the prospect that you're going to play with someone in your situation. There, mm -hmm. there are people playing at that store right then. It was yeah. like, I want to get involved in this. It's uh, yeah. That was that's probably the biggest selling point, just to have people playing games there. And all the time, you got some people that are like, "Yeah, I've got this, this, and this army. You want to try it out? And we can run a real a, a small intro game and stuff. Tell me which army that I have that you want to play with." Like people don't even like want you to get buying; they just want you to see if you like it. And and then inevitably, you get that first little <laughs> first little snort, the crack. First, the first hit's always free, right? Yeah, <laughs> and then they're like. Well, you know, oh, let's 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 pull up the Games Workshop website and let's go through all the armies together. <laughs> You'd be like, ooh, Tyranids. <laughs> yeah. There's always a little bit of fear just randomly putting your hand in your mouth. <laughs> You're right. That came from COVID for me before I was the filthiest man ever. Uh, and I'm like, did I wash my hands recently? Oh, I have it because I have a new puppy at home. And when he has an accident and I'm like wiping it up with paper towels and stuff. And I'm yeah. just like, oh, I put my finger in my mouth. That's just dog piss. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Unadvised. <laughs> yeah, you only do you only make that mistake once. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this topic uh, of community. We'd love to hear like your favorite examples of uh, like positive experiences in the miniature painting community in the com comment section below. Because I think those those would be fun to hear. Maybe even give us ideas about how we can interact with our own local communities. Yeah. Or the goody peepees. You know what I'm saying? Like no. we need we need to get all goody peepees 
you know, to get on uh, giant Mad Max trucks. Yes. And we, we drive through the desert. Oh. Right. And then we all have flags. Yeah. And, and, and they just say, do sucker. Okay. And then there's a guy playing a guitar that shoots flames outside the truck. Spray painting our mouths with yeah. silver paint. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Everyone has to buy a GW can of lead belcher. You got to bring it with you. <laughs> and then we'll just go in the middle of the desert and we'll make a giant bonfire and we'll dance around it. Okay. And while we have the spray paint in our face. There we go. I feel like this is really the evolution of what TendyCon needs to be. Okay. It's just Burning Man. Yeah, it's just Burning Man for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> that, are, that are often. <laughs> I, at one point, I wanted to, and I still want to do this, but I don't know like the logistics of how it work out. I'd love to do a barbecue and like fucking Com- sport event, you know, outside, you know, casually play volleyball or like football bro. or soccer or something. Dude. Kickball, dude. Kickball, dude. Yeah, dude. Hot dogs and fucking burgers. Yeah. RSVP so I know how many wieners to buy. Exactly. I would love that. Yeah, we should do that. The we big... Should. The big mini hangout. Yeah. The big mini hangout. That's fucking perfect. BMH, it's like, bro. It's like a oxymoron, but it isn't because it's referring to miniatures. Big mini. Yeah. Big mini hangout. I love it. I love clever Maybe titles. Maybe we should try to do that this summer. Okay. It's nice. Minnesota. You're so in nice. Midwest or you want to do a little road trip, do a little fam fam time. We'll, we'll supply the hot dogs. Yeah, dude. We don't even need to play a sport. I know, just kind of tack that on. Yeah, we well, could. I'll bring a kickball. Yeah. <laughs> and if nobody wants to play, I'll just use it as a dodgeball for the person that <laughs> least expects it. As soon as you're critiquing somebody's mini, boom, dodgeball, back of the head. I would love that, though. I love I love food, getting around food, so that'd be super fun. Yeah, yeah. Can you have beers in the park here? Yeah. Sweet. All right, yeah. You got to bring, somebody bring me a 30, 30 case of stones. And we'll be good. Dude, what if we played games outside? Is that dumb? I guess if it was windy, it'd be dumb. We, we, yeah, we're uh, at the behest of Mother Nature. Okay. But we certainly could. There's certainly some like kind of fun related party type game things yeah, too. They yeah. don't like really sit down. And- I shouldn't bring Nemesis is what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, you need to strap in for the next seven hours <laughs> looking at little fucking tokens <laughs> and 72 decks of cards. <laughs> 72 decks of cards. <laughs> well, we, uh, we figure out which one of us is trying to kill the other ones. <laughs> well, also, there's aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to play? <laughs> You know, in that crowd, I think everyone would want to play. They'd be like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" Like, oh, I want to play. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. can play. We can play some. We can do something like D and D and stuff out there too. Yeah, in the park. D and D in the park. Dude, LARPing, bro. Yeah, you just run around the park. Geek and pre- sports, dude. Pretend. Yeah, like uh, yeah. Instead of like throwing sh- shurikens, we throw in like uh, frisbee golf discs. <laughs> <laughs> Still kind of painful. Yeah, Those well, are pretty heavy. You know. Yeah, fireball. Pew. Okay. All right. So yeah, we're gonna look into that, and we have just like uh, just a getaway. Maybe we should do it on like a big abandoned campground or something. Okay. Do you know of any? Remember I showed you that picture of that place? That castle? A, that No, not that castle. Yeah, we should probably overtake that castle. <laughs> overtake it? What, yeah, is they this, don't, what is this, 1400? Yeah, they don't have any fucking moats, bro. <laughs> Let's teach them. We're going to learn them. Um, no, there's that place up in the back in the woods behind my house in the hill. Remember there's this old abandoned steel barn thing i showed you a picture of that it's the creepiest motherfucking thing but it's on this big flat plane oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but the problem is is we you have to go through this kind of rich neighborhood and you have to park and there's nowhere to park and you have to like walk through the woods for like a half mile but it, it's kind of like a, a <laughs> it's like a scavenger hunt can you find your way to the big mini hangout and if people get lost and they starve to death well i guess that's natural selection <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to be liable so we're not going to do that yeah i mean it's it's like a it's like a, you need to know somebody to know somebody. It's yeah. not advertising yeah, anywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. All Other right. than the fact that we're advertising it right now. Right. It, but we need to do something. Okay. We need to do something for freaking Adepticon, my, my dude. Some, what, what We are doing something. We're yeah. going. I know. I mean, for all the goody peepees. Like we need either, at, oh. the, at the bare minimum, like we want to do a live episode. We're technical difficulties, not within our control. Uh well, that's probably not going to happen. I'm not giving up hope yet, but yeah, I don't know if I should bring the gear or not. I'll ask him again before we come if there's any room. I mean, I'll yeah. ask him today. I don't care. Yeah. Just shoot him up and be like, look, look, it doesn't need to, we're not talking about a painting room. We're talking about anything bigger in the evening. Remember up on that second floor where like they did the Crystal Barsha Wars and that kind of stuff? Like, we'll bring the gear. You got to bring nothing. We'll conform to whatever restrictions you have, blah, blah, blah. We should need a big room in the evening. I'm going to message him right now. Yeah. Live. Because otherwise do it live. I will forget. Yeah. We're, like, we're flexible. We have 
a horde of at least seven or eight people that will show up of goody peepees. Because there's a lot of a lot of goody peepees are coming to Adepticon, and so we want to hang out with them. We want to you know shoot you know shout expletives uh, on a podcast together. So. <laughs> So we want to do that. We will let you all know. I'll post it in the Facebook group. We will. Um, I think we have one more episode before Adepticon goes live. Hopefully we'll get anything finalized there. So next episode, you'll know for sheezy where we're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. I like that. Um, yeah. So hey, what, what, earlier you were like, I, I, I asked you a thing and you had to go poop. And instead of saying, I need to think on it, like I'm going to poop on it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna poop on this thought. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's I'm, I'm thinking while I'm pooping, so it's it's like all of my brains because you know you have the uh, your gut has a brain. Yeah, um, your foot has a brain. Yeah, no, no, like there's actually the the neurons in your brain that like make you think and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The second largest uh, source of neurons in a single place in your body is your is your gut. Yeah, my elbow has a brain too. Yeah, I he's, mean, he's lying to me. I don't no, I mean, you're like, listen to your gut. You know what that phrase kind of came from? Yeah. Because a lot of your intuition of, of like thinking through a situation, your gut will actually guide you. See, this is true. Should I believe him? Good I, listen, he says so much BS. I know it's it's all poopies. <laughs> But there is some there uh, there's some shred of reality and truth in that statement. Yeah. I have met Welcome to the news section which was filmed after the uh after party because I'm an idiot. Yeah, well, the order wrong. All, all, the, all the other episodes Scott's like, "We do news now, John." La 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> John, you always forget when we do news. <laughs> like, it's true. I give him shit for it and then I did it. Yeah, well. All right. First up on the list, we got a little bit of tea, a little bit of mini paint tea. What do you mean by tea? Uh, okay. So drinking the tea is like a is like gossiping. It's, it's a like, British thing. No, it's uh, you know, I don't know where it derives from, but it's definitely a a, a phenomenon that's happening now. To say that phrase to mean gossip and like okay, all right, hot shady goss. shit. I just like saying hot goss. Hot goss. Okay, so there is a Kickstarter coming out. I believe it is for. Oh my gosh, the guy who loves to make vampires. Carol Rudick. Carol Rudick. And he commissioned a sculpt of Lilith uh, uh, by Baron Artwork. This guy does a lot of sculpts of famous actors. He did a, a Dune one for the recent Dune movie. Oh, uh, yes. It's Paul Atreides. Exactly. Uh, he's on Daenerys. He did, he did uh, this guy, uh, one of the Boondock Saints. Daryl from uh, Walking, Dead, Walking yeah. Dead as a space marine or, or as a stormcast eternal or something like that. Can he sell those things? No, he just does it for fun. I think. Okay. <laughs> it's like, um, so he sculpted it and it's a scene. It's a scene. So Lilith is like, I think she's like the goddess of sex or related to sex or some kind of like ecstasy in some way. Cause it's it a bunch of queen of the moon. I don't know what the moon has to do with humping, but right. something. <laughs> it's a lot of naked chicks. Like, like approaching a throne where she sits on this moon-shaped throne. I know when the moon is out, I'm most ready. Okay, for the hump scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, like, you're like a werewolf. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm sexy, John. <laughs> <laughs> I got a boner now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, there it features what looks like a rape scene. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. That's what it looks like. There's a girl defending herself from a dude who's making a, a sexual advance on her. And they're I mean, both, he's, they're he's both far, naked. He's far beyond in advance. Right. So what I read in the comments was this was originally supposed to be a vampire scene, which tracks because Carol's uh, mm -hmm. Kickstarter is all vampires. He makes all vampires. Mm -hmm. And so you're supposed to be biting her neck. But it turned into this. It turned um, into Humpson. Turned into, again, rape. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the, yeah. The expression on her face, the fact that she has her own. Her left arm to me is one of the biggest indicators that she's got her like her left arm up in front of her as a defensive position, trying to push him away, yeah. or keep him off her, and that. Now, so, so you could interpret that that's that's not what's happening. I mean, but I think it's very you would it's not a stretch in any man, part of the imagination to interpret that as rape. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I'll say. I don't know if there need to be limits on like what can be a miniature, like like we we've discussed in the past, like Nazis, like glorifying the Nazi regime is a bad thing, but like doing a part of history isn't a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So like, I guess maybe crossing the line is is does this 
glorify this? I don't know if it does. Does its existence, is, is that merely like too much? Um, I nope. don't know the answer to those questions. Nobody else in this room seems to have any problem with it. Right. Yeah. In the scene. Yeah. So, okay. I don't, I don't know the answer to those questions, but the T that we want to discuss is a, a great painter by the name of, uh, Natalie Arach, uh, mm-hmm. took offense to this. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was like, why, what, what's the deal with this? I, I honestly don't know what she said because unfortunately the comment was removed. Yeah, then it was a long string that they went back and forth. I did read it before it was removed. Okay. Um, and we did find out, confirmed from Natalie, that she did not remove the conversation. Yikes. That it was removed, I'm guessing, by the this poster, the person who posted this. Right. Barone artwork. Um, where she was upset, but not uh, still very respectful. Um, right. Was her tone of voice about it, about... This is like, why would you do this? Like, this right. is not okay. This is pretty apparent that this is rape. This is, you know, you have all sorts of room in the design sphere that why is this something you'd choose? Right. And from my recollection, again, this is recollection. It's, I don't remember it exactly. Um, he was pretty defensive. And he was yeah. like, that's not what it is. That's not what I was intending for. How do right. how do you know in somebody's bedroom what they're like and blah 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 and and then he went on to say kind of true I guess I mean yeah I guess but then he went on to say like well the thing that I thought was kind of spicy he was like so there's no wiggle room for you to criticize uh, a a sculptor and say that they didn't do something perfect so oh, you can yeah. call them out but if a painter does a terrible job on painting something that that's fine i didn't see how that was related i don't know it doesn't it's not related at all yeah um i think what he was trying to say was it's not it's not a perfect sculpt like it, okay, if, yeah, if, yeah, if yeah. my intention he didn't say my intention was not to make it look like rape i think that's what he's implying is if it came across a way that was not my intention i maybe didn't hit it on the mark why is there no, why are you not giving me any whatever? Yeah, any leeway, um, yeah. And she, but she was pretty like adamant about the fact that this this was vetted or approved by multiple people and that it's not just your fault or that you purposely did something wrong, but there was it was signed off on yeah. by multiple people for it to get to this level where it's going to be in production and that nobody brought that up. No one said like, hey, whoa, 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 this is... Yeah, not okay. He might have got pressure from someone else to delete that comment, right? Because this is it's not, entirely possible. It's not something that he's directly profiting from. Obviously, he got paid to sculpt it. Sure, but like you know, but at that point, so unless yeah. he gets some commission off of everyone that's sold, which right. I don't know, maybe he is. Who knows? Yeah. So again, yeah. we're not trying to cast stones. Just reporting on the news. Yeah. Uh. So we don't. We, I don't think you guys should go and like hate on, on anyone for this, but just to be aware of it. Um, uh, and also, this is not. This is one of those things where we find out about, but it's not necessarily a thing all the goody peepees would necessarily know about. Because it's not like this post like blew up and it became super viral and whatever. There's like 44 comments on it. Um, it's an well, Instagram post, and so I don't know if it's being talked about elsewhere. But I think it should be talked about, right? I think we should say like, hey, you know, maybe. Maybe we don't do that. Maybe yeah. we, maybe we try to be. Now it's really tough too because this is art, and he's a sculptor. It's really in the, kind of in the fine art art realm. If you look at like traditional art, there's some, and it's it's not that very hard to find very vulgar, very disturbing, very um, nasty stuff that is made by artists that is much worse than this. That because it's art. Right. Because that, that's, you're making a statement. You're trying to have something powerful. You're trying to, you know, have some reflection on society. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that is the artist making their statement. And it is it, it lives on as this as it is. And this is what my my gift to the world is, is to make the statement here. You're making a statue. Its purpose is to sell it for people to paint it. Yeah, that seems and a little that's weird. That's different. Yeah, I think I, it is. It is different, literally, um, and I think it should influence the decision making process when picking a concept to make a, a sculpt of. Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Interesting point. All right. Moving on. Moving on along. 
Let's talk about something else. Oh, yeah, I found this. 3D printed armies banned at Adepticon. Like entirely 3D printed or like any part of it is 3D printed. We're going to fucking kick you out and spit on you. Well, I got the... I, when I was digging into this, I found the most lo- loyal of, and reliable of sources, Spiky Bits. So that's where I'm <laughs> yeah. linking you all to. But this is a breakdown of the mo- model policy, Adepticon 2022. Um, it's kind of clickbaity. But it's. I actually think that Adepticon's stance on this is pretty solid. That they you can't use recasts and you can't use 3D printed equivalents for your army at Adepticon. So your 3D printed Space Marine army, you can't use that at Adepticon. I think that that's fair. However, what it talks, I think it says like bits or conversions you're open to conversions you're open to counts as as long as it's obvious and as long as people know if you want to add a 3d it, it comes to cross to me anyway if you want to add 3d printed guns of your guys because it only comes with one plasma or rifle a helmet. In a box or a different helmet or yeah. shoulder pads like i had for my um my night lords you could do that you just can't 3D print your entire Mutt Knight Lord's army. Okay, yeah, I understand this. They're probably getting heat from players who feel bad when they play someone who like who is using like action figures, like toy tanks. And it's like, you know, I took the time to buy my thing, to paint it, to assemble it, and then this is my opponent. And that's not the most fun. And so I, I get from that perspective why they would want to restrict this, right? Yeah, it's one of those like it's a slippery slope. It is. It's hard to define, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And so if you can, you're better off to be more stringent and so let, not let people kind of futz around with the figuring it out. And I st- uh, again, to me, it's like if I've got a 3D printer, there's still so many awesome things I can do for my Warhammer army, whether it's awesome bases, whether it's cool different weapons, whether it's different helmets, whether whatever, but uh, making my Rhino look slightly more custom with the the stuff on the side and whatever like there's tons of things you can do that you can still use um but you just can't 3d print the entire model yeah i think the the darren lat latham rule applies here yeah just don't take the piss just don't take the piss yeah and, and you know you know what the line is right? right i like how the last bullet point is models must adhere to all the above restrictions it's like did you think it was just a list for fun like, no, they're rules. Obviously, they're rules about the models, but yeah. they, had, they had they felt the need to reiterate that these are rules that you have to follow. Yeah. In the Well, they did call it a couple of things that I thought was pretty hilarious, but it says, for clarity, printed paper models or models constructed from building bo- blocks, a.k.a. Legos, do not meet this requirement. So <laughs> if you uh, why they put that in there was because. According to all the bullet points above, you could still bring a Lego Space Marines army and it would fit the criteria. But they had to put that in like, you okay, we shouldn't have to say this, but we're going to say it anyway. You can't make origami tyranids <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and bring them as your army, okay? Um, I don't know. I, I, I just... Is there going to be a day where major tournaments are just go, oh, yeah, you can 3D print, print whatever you want? Not for a Games Workshop game. I doubt it. That doesn't mean you can't 3D print your whole army at home and play with your buddies or play at your local store. That's perfectly fine. But Yeah, the majority of us are not tournament players playing at Adepticon. So mm-hmm. 3D print your entire army uh, it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah. All right. We All right. have Fucking more. Henry Cavill, man. Hey, bud. Went to the old Warhammer world. Yes. Speaking of Darren Latham. Yeah, Darren Latham took a picture with Henry Cavill at the Warhammer World. What's this? Uh, what's this? What's his voice? I don't really know right now. <laughs> you have a stroke? <laughs> no. It's kind of a, it's kind of a like a uh, baseball mid- midwestern deer hunter that goes out and we're gonna go get some get some beers after the game. <laughs> That's what I'm doing right now. It's Henry Cavill <laughs> at the Warhammer World. <laughs> Yeah, so you checked it out. They filmed some stuff. He had a coffee in every picture. Yeah, he's walking around with coffee. <laughs> he's just walking around with like like his coffee, like he's like he's holding it like it's his his bolter. Yeah, he's just like awkwardly holding it in every post. I just once I saw the coffee in every picture, I'm like, oh, there's his coffee again. <laughs> That's what my dumb brain thinks. It. Um, he like took a look, looks around. He's like looking at models. He's got that look on his face, like 
he has no idea if a model's painted well or not. But he's like, oh wow, wow. I'm sure he, I'm sure he knows he paints. Yeah. But, so I feel like the internet manifested this to happen, right? It's like as soon as people caught wind of the fact that Henry Cavill, the sexy man that he is, and he is fucking hot, uh, it was into miniature painting. They were like, I cannot let go of this. I like the custodian. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if this would have happened if there wasn't like such a huge thing about Henry Cavill being a hobbyist. Um but I feel like that's definitely a contributing factor. Also, he lives like probably three blocks away. I don't yeah, know. That's yeah. how big England is. Yeah, yeah. About three blocks. <laughs> yes. Okay. So he's right. He's he's nearby. He's I mean, maybe not filming Witcher today. You want to come by, take a big tour, go down to Bugman's, get a coffee or seven, <laughs> and uh, go to the go to the uh, the merch shop, pick out that sweater that he was wearing. Probably, 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 probably wear a different sweater next time. What's and, wrong with this sweater? Oh, dude. You like that sweater he was wearing? You're talking about his sweater and his coffee? Who the fuck cares? <laughs> <laughs> These are the things that I pay attention to. <laughs> um, yeah, he's like he went through the the painting studio area. He got to he did I, everything. I yeah. wonder if he bought anything. Hmm. He probably has, he it has if he people. Wants it. He has people to buy things for really? him. Is he that rich? I think so. I don't think he's that rich. Maybe he's not that rich. Maybe maybe now he is. Now that he got like the the big war or Witcher bucks are coming. Yeah, yeah. He did like how many Superman movies did he do? Just one. No. Was it multiple? Because he's done like Justice League. He's done the, he's done the own Superman movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, I he never, is DC Superman. Oh, uh, okay. I never I never watched any of those. So I think Superman's the, don't. <laughs> he's the <laughs> vanilla ice cream. You like you? He's, he's super. Not, not Henry Campbell. Superman. He's like, I'm going to go into Cold Stone with 72 flavors and 100,000 different toppings. Like, I would like a dish of one scoop of vanilla. That's Superman. Vanilla is a flavor. It is a flavor. And, and I'm it not, should be not, respected. Yeah, you know, it, is a, it, is a, it is a foundation, <laughs> right? Vanilla is the foundation no. flavor. It stands alone. But you need vanilla to add Reese's peanut butter cups to it and fudge and make it good. <laughs> right? <laughs> to make it good. Right? Yeah, yeah. There would be no... Uh, Aquaman, <laughs> if there wasn't first Superman. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Aquaman's even worse than Superman. So I, I mean, I mean yeah. speak it to the dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> once, once you have a guy who can is stronger than anything, can fly, has fucking laser eyes. It's can't, like, can't be killed. Can't except, be killed. Except for Green Rock later. Right, yeah. So it's like, does it get any better than this? Probably not. No. And he's just the nicest guy, too. Yeah. He's he humble. Perfectly. Grew up on a farm. Perfectly moral. Yeah. You know, doesn't matter. He's he's lawful good, yeah. straight through and through. Yep. Yawn. <laughs> right? Uh, okay, on our Facebook group, Mm-hmm. There was someone who made a petition uh, to get Henry Cavill to act as, I think, Robert Gulliman in a 40K movie. And they had, the person who posted it had made the petition. Okay. And they're kind of like, they're kind of like, I don't know if this is the right place for this, but I believe that if you want something to happen, you know, you got to be a change you want to see in the world. Sure. I'm all for that. I'm all for, I, I've, I have so much more respect for anyone that acts. Yes. Like, you can sit there and bitch on the internet or like, hey, what do you guys think? Oh, this would be good, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, if yeah. you don't put in the effort to like, I'm going to put action. Yes. Then, okay. I may not agree with it. I may think you're crazy. I may think it's stupid, but you did it. Right. Get it out there. So I would say there was like a 50-50 response. <laughs> people were kind of like observational and kind of like mildly supportive. And the other people were vehemently against it. Hmm. And so I get this impression that r- people are kind of sick of hearing about Henry Cavill. <laughs> <laughs> like they were like swearing and shit. Like yeah. they're like, oh my God, it's better everywhere. There's like very, they're very upset by it, which seemed like a, a seemingly harmful yeah. thing. It When it hit this week, so this will be a couple weeks ago by the time this podcast episode goes out. When it hit this week, it was like you couldn't go anywhere in the nerd art like our typical nerd sphere without being inundated with people sh- showing pictures talking about it blah 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 and then all that shit hit the fan and then two or three days later the gw releases their like teaser video of him and blah 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 so it, like it, like it got extended yeah and so i think people are just kind of like we get it uh an actor went to warhammer world cool let's move on yeah the bigger atrocity in this petition is his sweater is the sweater. Okay. <laughs> Y'all go out there. What's wrong with this Look at the pictures. Look at the things. And tell me 
That doesn't look like a sweater that you could get at Goodwill for two dollars. It looks <laughs> hoborific. Sorry, I'm sure it's not that bad. I'm sure Henry it, listens to this. I'm sure it costs more than my truck, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the back on track. The the bigger atrocity is that people want a Warhammer movie. Why wouldn't you want that? Because what the fuck is the story? There, what are you talking about? There's, it's all. Have you ever heard of lore, John? It's, it's all gobbledygook, like mess of mess. Ah, what, what are they gonna tell? They could tell like the rise of Rob, Robot Gulliman. Okay, but in order to understand this, you need to first understand this seven thousand page wiki of what led up to this, because. In a nutshell, none of the shit makes any sense. You don't got to do that. You, you you pick and choose. It just it, it's just okay. A talented writer will pick something and make a story out of it. You know? No, it's not a problem. Okay, I guess you could just do a small thing on Gaunt's ghosts. You know, it, it, it wouldn't even need to be about anything. You could just drop someone right into a thing yeah. and they would get it. You I know? guess if you if you have it at the micro, it's like we're not gonna try to even explain the world. The lore, the blah, blah, blah. We're going to get you into this micro story that's really interesting. And there'll be like touches of what this yeah, yeah, is yeah. about. Maybe not unlike what they did with the most recent Dune movie. They didn't spoon feed you everything. You just got to see the giant fucking ships. Yeah. The... Yeah. And you got to know, you know, about spaceship sounds. <laughs> yeah. Dragonfly spaceships. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and like yeah. the suits that, that it recycles your own piss and you drink it. <laughs> All that, like, he didn't explain all that. You just gotta watch it in your girlfriend. Okay, I take it all back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That kind of movie, if done well, pushed at the micro, and we just got a touch of not all the bullshit craziness that is all the Warhammer universe, could be awesome. Yeah, I feel bad for the writer who has to somehow <laughs> demystify whatever the fuck's going on in 40k lore into a actually understandable yeah, story. Two hour movie. Yeah, I think your approach of you don't right. <laughs> yeah, is the best <laughs> yeah. approach. Uh, robot some guy yeah whatever okay back to this <laughs> <laughs> ah they're space aliens <laughs> they're called tyrannids all right we're at the end of the episode this is this time i yell really loud in here i'm trying to build up farts to put in jars for scott's kickstarter later <laughs> oh this is a long episode yeah we talked a lot um, it's almost 10 to o'clock though. It is. So that's our cue to end the episode and your cue to, to hunt down some tendies in yes. the wild. Go tendy hunting. If you guys like the podcast, there are multiple ways to support it. Some free ways are you can whitelist our channel so you see the ads on it. I play one every 30 minutes on this episode. I mean, it's probably like 10 ads. Um, you can do that with various Chrome and Firefox extensions. You can leave us a review. I actually went on Apple Podcasts and looked at our reviews. You guys are super nice. Thank you so much. We're at 4.9 stars. Except for fucking Steve. God damn it, Steve. Steve, that one star, you're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> uh, share the podcast with your nerd friends. Other non-free ways to support the podcast, you can buy our merch. John and I are both unintentionally wore Tup merch today. I got a sweater. He's got a T. Two different designs. Both phenomenal designs. Yeah. Uh, you can also support us on Patreon, where you get access to an extended episode, because you need more of us talking to you, uh, where we talk about things like our favorite minis from other painters, things we tried out, experimented with, failed with, and also we give feedback to one of our Patreon members. So, as a patron, you can submit models for us to give feedback to. We do one an episode. And also, as a patron, you can submit topics for us to discuss. Yeah. We often get really good topics based on those patrons, so no pressure, but bring the good stuff. Yeah, bring your fucking A-game. Yeah, bud. Bud. That's it. I That's chilled. It. Okay. Enough with the chill. Uh, enough with the farts of the jars. <laughs> We're going to go eat some tendies, and we'll catch you on the flippity flop. <laughs>